I just saw the movie Sonic 2. And I gotta say, the game Sonic 2 is probably my favorite game on the Sega Genesis. I was more of a Nintendo kid, but when I played Sonic 2, it made me wanna get a Sega Genesis. I eventually did get one um, sometime after the price came down, and you bet that was the first game I got. So naturally, when I saw Tails was gonna be in the second movie, ever since they showed him at the end of the first one, I thought, wow, this is cool. They're taking cues from the game. I expected this one to have more references to the game, and it did. I'm not gonna tell you what they all are, just so you can see it for yourself. Um, I wonder if they'll make a game based on the Sonic movies, a big Sega sponsorship. That might be cool. But speaking of games and sponsors, before I get into the movie, let me tell you about this video sponsor. Believe it or not, today's a big day, and there's one game that keeps pulling me back in over everything else, and it just hit its three-year anniversary milestone. That game is, of course, Raid Shadow Legends. Available on PC and mobile, choose from hundreds of characters that are part of an always expanding roster that never ceases to amaze me. They've added a ton of things like a brand new faction and of course the always challenging Doom Tower that veteran players can really sink their teeth into. Speaking of teeth, how many does a Hydra have? You know, with all those regenerating heads? Hmm. Well, anyway, the Hydra clan boss was a huge addition to the game. All this month, as part of Raid's three-year anniversary celebration, they'll be giving away free gifts to everyone and adding a bunch of new content like special events and tournaments featuring the baddest champions and goodies of all. That's new champions, artifact sets, and even a fully personalized video showcasing every player's Raid journey, plus their personal achievements. There's never been a better time to jump in. If you use my link or scan the QR code on screen, new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $40 to kickstart their game. You'll get free champions, Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, 10 Magic XP Brew, 10 Force XP Brew, and 10 Spirit XP Brew. And since it's Raid's birthday, all new and existing players will receive free gifts worth over $25. Just enter promo code three years raid in game and it's all yours. It's that easy. Again, just use the link in my description or the QR code on screen and I'll see you in the game. Back to the Sonic 2 movie. I'm real curious what you think of it. I'm not sure what the general reception is since I'm fresh off of seeing it, but I can imagine it going both ways. Some may not like it because it's real silly, but I can see a lot of people enjoying it too. I myself enjoyed it. Uh, it's just a big, dumb, fun, explosive popcorn movie. Nothing revolutionary, nothing groundbreaking, but lots of fun. Within these past couple years of pandemic, I appreciate just the fact a film gets made. Entertainment is important, and I find myself enjoying stuff more than ever these days. The plot is basically the same type of thing as every other action fantasy film. There's a powerful item, the MacGuffin, that the villain is after and the heroes have to get to it first. In this case, it's Dr. Robotnik, who's joined by Knuckles, and on the hero side you have Sonic and Tails. And the item they're after is the Master Emerald, the one that controls all the Chaos Emeralds, you know, from the video game. It's funny how so many movies seem like they could have been from video games, but here's one where the plot is literally from a game, and it actually feels a lot like the game. That's one thing that makes me happy, is that there were many parts that reminded me of the games. For example, there's a scene underwater that made me think of those underwater levels where you have to swallow the bubbles for air supply. There's also some quick little visual nods. There's an instruction manual that's made to look like a Genesis manual. I could see kids liking this a lot. It's very lighthearted and goofy, kind of in a Power Rangers sort of way. There's fart jokes, there's cute CG characters. But with that said, don't take my word for it. Uh, parents might want to take a little caution because there's some drinking in it and maybe some parts that might be a little scary. There's a line when Robotnik is trying to escape the Mushroom Kingdom, or sorry, Mushroom Planet, and he says, 
Get me off this piece of shiitake world. Yeah, I bet you didn't know I wrote this movie. <laughs> it kind of seems that way. The humor can be real stupid, but it's consistently stupid. It's not like there's some bad jokes here and there that stick out. Uh, it all just feels in tune. It doesn't take itself seriously. There's references to Wizard of Oz, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Ghostbusters, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Limp Biscuit. Yeah. Oh, and it's not without the little Olive Garden joke again. <laughs> Jim Carrey as Robotnik. Uh, he goes all the way as a cheesy villain with the evil laugh, the one-liners, and everything else. This time he actually looks a lot more like the Robotnik character with the mustache and the wardrobe and all. His performance is a little different than the first movie. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it seemed to me like the first one was more 90s Jim Carrey, which I loved because it was very nostalgic. But this one seems like he's not referencing himself quite as much. And honestly, I don't know which one I like better, but uh, I think this time he is more more Robotnik and less Jim Carrey. Someone call an Uber? It's cold in here. Let's turn up the heat. Idris Elba is the voice of Knuckles and was the standout performance for me. Uh, perfect voice. Knuckles has a 24-7 warrior mindset. So everything he says is uh, you know, with a serious tone and intent, but he doesn't realize he's being funny the whole time. I still find it to be an odd choice that Sonic has been transported to the real world. I think a movie like this could have existed purely within the game's fantasy world. I found it strange with the first movie, and I still find it strange. Uh, for example, the first time we see Sonic, it's in an action scene in a city involving an armored vehicle. Uh, just to see Sonic the Hedgehog swinging in through the window made me think, you know, this is something that you'd see Bruce Willis or Keanu Reeves doing. Yeah, I want to see in the Mario movie, I want to see Mario punch somebody through a glass window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The human characters from the first movie, the husband and wife, Tom and Maddie, are still in it, but now it seems they have way less screen time which I'm in favor of. I think Sonic should be the main focus of his own movie. And with the addition of Tails and Knuckles, you have plenty. Besides Robotnik, all the other human characters get reduced into minor roles. And that would be good, but something felt weird to me, like even more weird than before. And I think the reason is because it seemed to me the human characters and the Sonic characters didn't interact as often. Like everyone's off doing their own thing. So it felt very separated, almost like you're switching back and forth between two different movies. Sonic scenes, human scenes, Sonic scenes, human scenes. And it makes you wonder why even have the human scenes? There's an entire subplot involving a wedding. And even though it's a really fun scene, there came a moment when I asked myself, what does a pissed off bride chugging sparkling wine and blowing shit up have to do with Sonic the Hedgehog? Still, I really enjoyed that scene, but it was so random. I think it could have been cut down into a Geico commercial. Another scene I really enjoyed was when Sonic and Tails run into some trouble in a bar and you think it's gonna turn into a, a big bar fight, but instead it's a dance off. Not something I would expect out of Sonic the Hedgehog, but it was very entertaining. But it begs the question, why can't Sonic just run out? In the first movie, they establish how fast he is. So fast that he can run circles around people, even has time to switch their hats and their clothing and play pranks on them. So why couldn't he do it here? Still, I loved it. Cliché scene, but I don't mind. Speaking of cliché, the one that I'm starting to notice all the time now is the villain always has this phase where he's surging with power and he floats in the air surrounded by electricity. It's like every single Marvel movie and I don't know, just a, a cliche that I've begun to notice and it's getting a little, <laughs> little tiresome. But I think the one major complaint that I have, I complained about it the first time and it still hasn't been rectified. So I'm gonna have to complain again where is the Sonic music? 
Oh, they snuck it in as a ringtone, as a character's ringtone on their phone. So help me, Thomas. Sorry, sorry. Why couldn't it be the main score of the movie? Imagine an orchestral arrangement of the Sonic theme, and there could be like a, you know, a sad version of it, and all kinds of, you know, it comes in all in different ways as a motif. Um, and when I say the Sonic theme, I mean Green Hill Zone level one, but I would have accepted any other one. I just don't understand why they ignore that, or they, they don't think there's room to fit it in, but they have tons of other songs in the movie. I mean, mostly all pre-existing music, like pop songs, there's some classical, and even Pantera. Yeah, that made me laugh out loud in a good way. I loved hearing Pantera, but it's really a shame they found no room for the Sonic theme again. So which Sonic movie did you like better? Um, for me, uh, I don't know. They're different. I think the first one has a better story, better pacing, I think, but the second one has a lot more references to the game, and uh, I don't know, but I had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, I'm glad both Sonic movies have been a blast so far. Remember a few years ago, there were all these complaints about Sonic's teeth in the trailer or something, but now there's two movies out and they're both pretty good. So glad to see a Sonic franchise happening and doing well. So let me know what you think of it, and I'm really looking forward to the Mario movie. I'm very curious what they're going to do with that one, and I'm in favor of more video game movies being made from the 80s generation. There's been lots of Resident Evil movies and stuff like that, but it's cool to see the older, more kid-friendly Nintendo Sega characters getting their time again in the spotlight. Well, stay tuned. You'll see me again soon. Got a nerd video in the works.